oil prices, they're out of control. And, you know, I understand that that's hurting a lot of people in this country. We f I feel incredibly lucky that during this, these time periods, I'm fairly insulated from it because I walk and take the subway. I, uh, yeah, I chose, I got two uh, offers that I was thinking about accepting for grad school, which one, one was Pepperdine in Malibu and the other was here in New York. And yeah. I choose New York because of the public transportation. Even though I, I like driving in North Dakota, I used to just do it often cheap gas in North Dakota. Uh, I wanted to get out of that, and I, it's it's horrible. And Pepperdine's for, supposed to be like the most beautiful uh, university in the country. Yeah, so. it's fine. I'm New York. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's just it's it's. Um, I, I know that you, a lot of you are probably dealing with this right now, and it's hard to discern really how much price gouging by these oil companies is contributing to gasoline prices. Um, but it's a substantial amount. It's certainly a substantial amount. And with inflation in general, gasoline is um, is accounting for, I, I think I saw David Dayen write 20% of inflation last month, which also contributes to the inflation of other goods increasing. Oh yeah, it's fundamental. Because of, the tr uh, because of our supply chains and because how much is needed to manufacture those kinds of things. You can put that up from uh, Warren Gunnels. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Warren Gunnels, uh, he's a Bernie Sanders advisor, says uh, oil prices today, $115 a barrel. Gas prices today, $5 a gallon. Oil prices in 2008, $116. Uh, gas prices in 2008, $3.51 a gallon. He says gas prices are $1.50 a gallon higher than they should be because of the greed of big, big oil. Uh, no, no, uh, uh, dispute there. Uh, it's time for a windfall profits tax. I would say at the very least. At the very least. Um, like that, that, the problem with, I think, where we are politically in this country is like, and I'm not criticizing Gundels here, like, um, really. That's a politically possible thing within Maybe, the context of a Biden administration, if anything But at it's all. like, we're talking about the FDR administration. You need to threaten, uh, like, that should be at, that, that, you're getting taxed. We're well, going to be a windfall tax. Yeah. Um, the threat should be, we're going to nationalize you and kick all the profiteers out of this industry and, uh, and decide who gets to get oil and at what price. Um, and instead, you know, a windfall tax, look, if that's what happened after that threat, because the Congress is Congress and you didn't, it couldn't get a revolution fine. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's for everybody that's wondering why oil, uh, gas prices are so high. It's not because the Democrats are too unfriendly to the oil industry. That's <laughs> an oil industry talking point. Come on guys. Um, it's because those profiteers aren't, I mean, well, we'll play the Stussy clip now. Yeah, let's play the Stussy clip now. And, and, and just to, to buttress uh, Gunnell's point and Matt's point here, uh, oil companies are seeing record profits right now. The relationship between the barrel price and the price at the pump is entirely fractured, and that fracture is due to greed by oil and gas companies, and they're flexing their muscle. And frankly, I would also say we're going to see a lot more of this during Democratic administrations when they talk about climate change at all. Hey, you want to regulate us? You want to cut into our profits? We're going to make you pay politically by making gas, oil and gas a lot more expensive. But here's Peter Ducey asking John Kirby about uh, uh, of the Biden administration. What's his official title? He well, he was the Pentagon press secretary, but he's now like a coordinator within the National Security Council. Gotcha. He's, he's just like a you know amorphous uh, blob guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Literal blob guy. Uh, bl a blob <laughs> guy, both in his uh, title and in what he represents. Um, and so he uh, has this interaction with Peter Ducey about Biden's uh, upcoming trip to Saudi Arabia, where he's going to beg for oil. Because like Matt said, just said. It's there's no stick approach with Biden. It's just please, please, come on, man, come on, man, and no like threats, actual threats, as opposed to marginal taxes. Here's this interaction. I have a question about U.S. national security. How is it that you guys have determined that it's in the U.S. national security interest to ask Saudi Arabia to drill more oil? Uh, instead of just letting oil companies drill more here in the U.S.? Well, I think you know, uh, Peter, there's uh, some 9,000 unused drilling permits here in the United States uh, as well. Um, look, um, uh, the, uh, the oil production issue is a global issue, uh, and OPEC plus three has already increased 
preset increases by more than 50% just for <coughs> July and, uh, and August. Uh, and we're grateful to Saudi Arabia's leadership on that. But we've never said that, uh, we've never said it's a national security interest that somebody has to pump more oil. Uh, and again, there's there's unused permits here in the United States. Uh, and But as a national strategic issue, So, I mean, there's a a good uh, interaction that I think displays the limited contours of how the Biden administration and naturally, you know, just establishment politicians are viewing this. Um, Because there, I think, are a few options that need to be considered or should be implemented, frankly. One, Biden needs to implement price controls. We've done price controls to combat inflation in wartime in the past, during World War I and World War II, where there the public is more amenable to that kind of thing in theory. But frankly, if it's going to get ga- oil and gas prices under control, the political uh, benefits will follow. Biden's just terrified that he's going to get called socialist by Fox News, which he is already getting called as they hit him on oil and gas prices uh, at the pump. So that is what hap- needs to happen in the short term. Then you can also begin to normalize relations with Venezuela if you're so worried about oil and gas. And thirdly, the big, big goal is nationalizing this, as Matt said. We, th- this is, uh, Bradley was talking about this before the show too. This is the ultimate indication of a failure of neoliberalism that we are held hostage by these massive oil and gas companies and are at the whims of what they've decided the prices are going to be. And if Mohammed bin Salman wants to be petty and doesn't like Biden because he didn't suck up to him sufficiently and also wants to make him pay politically, so somebody is going to, maybe he can tilt the scales just a little bit on election day for a guy that's in his favor who won't do anything about oil and gas or, or woman, but on the Republican side, that's not very likely. Like... Um, that he's going to do it. They have the ability to flex their muscles as long as we go down this path of being beholden to them and not nationalizing them. Yeah, it's not clear to me why we didn't go. We talked about this with uh, Derek and Danny of American Prestige on Left Reckoning last night, but why they didn't, uh, it, uh, at least also both, like do if you're going to do Saudi Arabia, do Venezuela too, open up diplomacy there. It look, looked like there was some hints toward that. And the inertia of uh, the American government and wanting to like basically discipline countries that aren't friendly to it as opposed to like bend over backwards to uh, apologize for countries that do support us like Saudi Arabia is just really pronounced and but it's it's really uh, disheartening like this is why we've not gotten anywhere on climate or oil is because um, the, nobody in the video we just showed is a good person. Yeah. Um, like, and on the one side you have the the hack journalist uh, representing right wing interests, re- representing the oil industry, saying, "Hey, w- as the oil industry is gouging us, the question is framed: Why won't you let the oil industry save us?" Uh, and then you have no, the, the Amer the oil industry, but with the American flag painted on. Yeah, it. exactly. And then you have uh, the Biden administration, which is like, "We're going to just." Um, you know, uh, ask nicely around the oil industry and uh, and Saudi Arabia and all the you know various sociopaths and uh, and see what they get us. It's see deeply if they can unserious. Work together with us, but it's- we can't deal with Venezuela, Matt, because they are a totalitarian, awful country that treats its people wrong. Oh wait, as I go fly over to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> to kiss Blinken is still talking about Guaido. MBS on the mouth. Yeah. Blink, I mean it's 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 a farce. 